We are leaving this house. Huh? I didn't know what he was saying. We are giving this place to Matt. What? What on earth are you saying? You can't make decisions like that on your own. Shut up. You have no right to talk back to me. We are giving this house to my brother. If you won't agree, we're getting a divorce. With this, the slight feelings that I had left for my husband completely disappear. Okay then, let's get a divorce. My name is Sarah and I am 32 years old. It's been four years since I got married to my husband, Tom. We wanted kids, but it didn't work out and it's been just the two of us since. One time, we did consider receiving fertility treatment, but Tom said it would be fine with just the two of us. So we decided not to. I was so happy when he said this to me. I felt it would be absolutely possible for me to spend the rest of my life happy with just the two of us. However, we've been through so much recently and you won't exactly be able to call our life happy. Tom's parents both died recently. His father passed away due to cancer and his mother, who was not well to begin with, got even weaker after her husband's death and she passed away soon after that as well. We spent our days busy with their funerals and discussing the succession of their property. So it has been tough to find time to relax as husband and wife. To add, I did feel he was slightly like this to begin with, but Tom believes that the husband is the boss of the family and he is sometimes very strict with what he says. At times, he would purposely make me look bad in front of others. In his way of being modest, because I am his wife and a member of his family. I do understand where he is coming from, but recently it's become so bad that he treats me as if I am a terrible wife. If I ever make the slightest mistake with housework, he scolds me as if I've done something absolutely unthinkable. Before we got married, we worked together in the office and he was my boss. Because of this hierarchy, even before entering marriage, I think Tom still has the mindset that I work for him. But that's not how marriage should work. My wish is that he treats me better as his wife. However, not everything about him is bad. When we work together, he left me in charge of projects for my own growth. But I would always be there if I needed him or made any mistakes. He would listen to any concerns that I had and I thought he was the man I could truly rely on. He would compliment me and say, you did well when we got through a project. He was so charming at work that I completely fell for him. The real reason that I decided to marry him was because he was there for me when I lost my uncle, who I was very close to. We got married after dating for a year and a half. I left the office and I'm currently working part-time while doing the housework as well. It seems Tom is busy with his work recently with his work recently and he often returns late. He often does overtime and usually comes home at around 9.30 p.m. He's a manager, so I know it can't be helped. Hope you didn't have too rough of a day today, I say when he returns home. However, there's no reply. What's for dinner? This is always the only thing he says. Oh, um, I made 
wanted some curry. He ignores my reply, saying, Beer, and sits at the table. I hang the suits he threw on the floor and, and hurriedly go to get some beer. He likes it freezing cold and is angry when it's not. So I have to put it in the freezer about 30 minutes before he comes home. He's not happy if it's actually frozen either. So I needed to be careful of the timing. That's why I always get nervous when it gets nearer to the time of his return. He doesn't seem to give a care in the world about my worries. And once he finishes his dinner, he heads straight for a shower. I have to put his folded new clothes and towels in the bathroom once he's gone in. And clear the dishes that he just used. I never know what is going to make him angry. Today he shouted, Hey, why is there no chocolate mint ice cream? I'm sorry, they didn't sell it at the nearby supermarket. He glares at me, head to the bedroom, and goes to sleep. He was never the type that chatted a lot, and we really don't have many conversations anymore. I'm sure he must be tired from work too, but I don't think we've properly spoken for about six months. However, I still have feelings for my husband. As I said, He comforted me when I lost my dear uncle, which is a reason why I still trust and rely on him so much. After my parents got divorced, while I was in middle school, I lived with my mom. But when I was a sophomore in high school, she became ill and sadly passed away. After that, I lived with my uncle. He was like a father to me. And I loved him so much. He let me go to college. And once I started working, I would save up and take him to nice restaurants and buy him presents. I loved living with him, and I am still so grateful to him. My dad was not a decent man. So to me, my uncle feels more like my father. However, My days with him didn't last long. My uncle died of cancer too. I don't know whether it's genetic, but it was the same cancer as my mother's. I was devastated at having to say goodbye to him so early, losing my only family. I felt there was no one else that I could rely on. I was completely alone. There was so much that I still wanted to do with my uncle. I wanted to take him on a vacation, to thank him for everything that he had done. For a while, I didn't feel like I could even eat. It was then when Tom one day came over to comfort me. He asked me why I was feeling so down. And when I told him, he said, That must be really tough for you. Thank you for working so hard at such a rough time. He was always a strict boss, but I felt saved by his warm and kind words. Since then, I've trusted him with all my heart. And even though he is strict at times, this has made me want to continue our relationship as a married couple. However, this is all about to change due to a certain phone call. The phone rings, and it is from Tom's brother, Matt. It's nice to hear from you, Matt. What's up? I have something I want to tell Tom. Is he there? Matt didn't sound too cheerful, and I become slightly worried. I hand the phone to my husband. Tom is very fond of his brother, and he's always saying how proud of him he is. Matt graduated from an Ivy League university 
works at a leading corporation, and has an amazing personality. He truly is a wonderful guy, and I can understand why Tom would be proud. Tom seems so happy to receive the call from his brother. Matt, thanks for the call. What's up? Until a moment ago, Tom was watching TV with no expression on his face, but now he lights up. However, I was worried about the tone of Matt's voice when I pick up the phone, and my concerns become a reality. Tom's smile fades from his face, and his voice on the phone seems worried. So, are you okay? What on earth could it be? Got it. Don't push yourself too hard, and remember, you can always rely on me. He says, and he hangs up. What's wrong? Matt got fired. What? I freeze at the sudden bad news. I did hear that the company wasn't going too well, but I didn't think they would fire Matt of all people. Tom sits on the couch and sighs. I can't believe it either. Matt is kind and gentle, and I hear he's good at his job. He respects me too. And when he heard Tom saying awful things about me when the relatives gathered, he told Tom off one time. He even said, "I'm sorry for my brother's rudeness," and apologized to me. Matt got married last year, and his wife seems nice, and they are a beautiful couple. I would imagine that they would become a warm and caring family. That's why I am shocked to hear he is suddenly become a victim of corporate downsizing. I'm so worried. Is there anything we could do? I generally feel this way, so this is what I say. However, Tom has a stern look on his face, and he screams. Huh? What exactly do you think you could do? You're just going to cause more trouble, so don't even think about doing anything. I'm shocked. I never expected he would say anything like this. This has gone too far. I snap back at him. More trouble? What do you mean by that? Tom seems even angrier by this. All of this has nothing to do with you. Keep out of it. You're just a housewife. What do you know? Nothing to do with me. We're family. You're my wife. You have nothing to do with Matt. I am shocked to hear this is what he believes. Even if he's upset, I cannot forgive him for saying something like this. Since then. Tom has gotten even more aggressive than before. I envy you as a housewife. You don't have any stress from work, and all you need to do is the housework. But you should care more about what you wear, you know. Matt's wife is always stylish. Tom used to say, "Stop wasting my money on clothes and makeup." Which is it? Does he want me to try look good or not? I gradually become more and more exhausted from these attacks from my husband. I could bear it because I still respected him, but recently it's become so bad. If I say something wrong or even I say nothing at all, he is always irritated towards me. We don't make eye contact anymore. We don't say a word to each other either. I began to wonder why I am even married to this man. And one day, this is what happened. It's very rare to see Tom up so early on a day off. I wonder if he has some plans, and I see that he is packing some boxes. He is throwing items away into a garbage bag as well. 
as we haven't had normal conversation for a while now. I say nothing to him, although I am curious as to what he is up to. And then he sees that I am watching him, and he says, "Hey, you help me with this." I am surprised that he is speaking to me, and I replied with, "Are you tidying your room?" However, his response is not what I had expected. We are leaving this house, huh? I didn't know what he was saying. We are giving this place to Matt. What? What on earth are you saying? You can make decisions like that on your own. What? You can't make complaints to me like that. This is too much. Don't think you can threaten me like that. And have everything go the way you want it to. Where are we gonna live if we hand this place to Matt? We'll find a way. Have you spoken to him about this? I will do. Exactly as I thought. I have no intention to believe that Matt and his wife want this for themselves. You have no idea how much trouble Matt is actually in. There's no point in doing this without him knowing. Shut up! You have no right to talk back to me. We are giving this house to my brother. If you won't agree, we're getting a divorce. With this, the slight feelings that I had left for my husband completely disappear. Okay then, let's get a divorce. Hearing my response, Tom looks surprised for a moment, but he says, "Okay, I'm serious, you know," and goes out. He returns soon enough and shouts. Here are the divorce papers. Let's do it now. He throws the papers in my direction, and I silently sign them. Okay, I'm submitting them, and I go out to have them submitted. Once I am home, I see Tom continuing to pack his things in boxes. It's done. I've submitted the papers. Okay. You pack your things too, then. With this, I replied to him coolly, "What are you talking about? I'm not leaving." Tom looks furious. "What? Stop furring around and pack your stuff." I said we are giving this place to Matt. He doesn't seem to understand, so I continue calmly. This house. It's in my name, you know. This land was original my uncle's. Huh? You're not saying you forgot, are you? I owned this place even before we got married. Hearing this, Tom's face is turning blue. How are you going to hand over this house to Matt? What it belongs to me. Besides. You never paid any property tax, did you? And you're speaking like this is your own house. You're the only one leaving now that we are divorced. It seems Tom finally understands the situation. Wait a second, Sarah. I'm sorry. Please, can you calm down? Excuse me. I'm completely calm. Thank you very much. You're the one who should be calming down. If you think you own this place, did you feel like you owned everything just because you were able to order me around? I was grateful to you, and I respected you. You know, you were there for me when I lost my uncle, and I could rely on you as a boss. But now. You're just a husband that harasses me. Have you ever treated me properly? No. 
You treated me as if I were a housekeeper, and I can't stand it any longer. I never want to see you again. I'm not handing this house to anyone, and you're the one that's leaving. You seem to have finished packing your bags, so get out of my house right now. If you're staying, I'm calling the police. Tom is in shock. And he collapses on the floor. After that, he rents a storage room to temporarily store his boxes, and stays at a business hotel. Soon after, I hear he rented an apartment and started living there as if nothing had happened. But some of my former colleagues are still close friends with me. Therefore, they know about Tom's attitudes towards me during our marriage. And everyone in the office finds out what happened between us, so no one trusts him anymore. It seems he is spending a rough time at the office. He's not doing well with his work either, and he's relegated to a department where there are hardly any important tasks to do. One day, about one year after the divorce. I am heading home from the supermarket, and someone stops me on the street. It's my ex-husband. I try to ignore him and continue walking, but he followed me. It's kind of creepy because he keeps saying hi and hey to me. He won't stop, and I got scared, so I said, "Please, can you stop that? What on earth do you want?" I stop walking and look at him, and he says something I had not expected at all. It's all your fault. Excuse me? How my parents both died in a row, and how my brother got fired? Um, I don't understand what you're talking about. You jinxed us. You're the one who made terrible things happen to me and my family. How silly is this? I have nothing to do with that. It's been disaster after disaster ever since I married you. If I hadn't, I'd still be living a happy life. Oh, really? Then how about you getting a promotion while we are married? Has that got nothing to do with our marriage? And what about Matt getting married to that lovely wife of his? That also happened while we were together, right? I am very calm when I say this. Tom has nothing to say back. Just because your life isn't going well, don't say I jinxed it and blame it all on me. If you are going to follow me any further, I'm calling the police. With this. Tom droops his head and walks away. I post a restraining order against my ex-husband, and decide to phone Matt. He starts the phone call with "I'm sorry about my brother," and he explains what happened after our divorce. It seems he never said he wanted the house. When he heard this from Tom, he was angry with him, saying he never asked him to do that. Learning that we got divorced, he says he felt sorry for me and decided to put some distance between him and Tom. He says he felt that Tom would cause trouble again one day if he continued their relationship. I think the reason why Tom came to me and said I jinxed him was because his dear brother put some distance between them. That's his problem, not mine. By the way, even though Matt was fired, thanks to his experience and talent, he was recruited to be a general manager at another company. And it seems his salary is even better than before. Hearing this, I am confident that I never jinxed Tom's family. When I tell Matt that I post a restraining order against Tom, he says, "I have no problem with that." I think that's the right thing to do. 
Now Tom is completely on his own, but it's all his own fault. You can tell how important it is to be thoughtful to each other, to build a good relationship. I'm going to consider this a lesson learned, and try to be thoughtful to all the people at my new office and everyone I encounter in the future. Isn't it unbelievable that he forgot he didn't own the house? And the way he kept harassing Sarah is unacceptable. However good he was at his job, it's a good thing Sarah divorced him. I hope she finds someone better in the future. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, and see you in the next one. My happy married life didn't last long. We have been married two years. I still have feelings towards my husband, and I spend every day devoting my time to him. I want him to continue to see me as attractive, so I always take care of myself and try to look good. However, I find out that my husband is having an affair. She's the love of my life. I want a divorce. One afternoon. I had believed my husband John was at work, but he suddenly came home with his lover. Divorce papers are in his hands. Since when? Um, since after the trip that we went on last year. His lover is sitting there with no expression on her face. When John says trip, he's probably referring to our honeymoon. We hadn't be able to go, so when I received an expected bonus, John said he wanted to go. So we made the decision at the last minute. Of course, I was the one that paid for it. According to John, his ex-girlfriend and current lover reached out to him during our honeymoon, and that is when he realized he still had feelings for her. What on earth are you talking about? We were on our honeymoon. There's no point saying that now. I love her. She needs me too. It's just we were a little late in realizing how we feel about each other. I do like you, but she's the one that I truly love. You've got to understand. How can I? How did he think I would sign the divorce papers? What about how I feel? John sighs as if he doesn't know what to do, and says, "You find someone better. You probably don't want to stay in this house anymore either. We'll live here. So you pack your stuff and leave in about a week." It's as if he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. He's the one who asked me out and proposed to me, and now he's the one who is going to dump me. He took no responsibility for anything all throughout our marriage, and I have a sense that all my feelings towards him are suddenly disappeared, without even a word of apology from John. I signed the divorce papers. With this. My husband and his lover leave the house. We'll come back next week, so be out by then," he said. I feel like the inside of me is freezing. All of it is so sudden that I don't even shed a tear. And rather than feeling betrayed, I feel I have been deceived, which makes me feel so bad for myself and the situation I am in. The next day. I ask a friend to help gather all my belongings and return to my parents' house because I work as a nurse. While John is not paid so well at his company, I was the one paying most of the living expenses. Although I am shocked at John's having an affair and the divorce, I won't have to pay the rent anymore, which I am going to consider a great benefit in this situation. I've decided where I'm going to live, and I am packing my stuff again to leave my parents' house. Kathy, um, Jones here," says my mother. 
It's raining outside, so I let him in. She looks at me apologetically. What on earth does my ex-husband want with me after all this time? He said I'm not the love of his life. So he can't be here to ask for me to come back. Is that the case? Does he want money? I feel it's rude to be making such an assumption. But considering how much he spent and how he complained about working while we were married, it's most natural to think that money is the reason he's here. Maybe I have something of his that he's forgotten. So I decided to go down the living room to hear what he has to say. What do you want? My father's voice is angry, but John is calm when he says, I would like to talk to your daughter. He must have nerve to be calm in this situation. What do you want? I'm busy now, you know. I open the door to face him, hoping this is going to be quick. And I am lost for words. There, his lover, or rather his new wife, is sitting next to him, as if it's her right to be there. Why is she here? This is my parents' house. What are you thinking? Any normal person wouldn't bring this woman here. And it's insane that she thought it was okay to come along too. Bringing his former mistress to the house that I grew up in? It's more than insulting. Calm down. His attitude and words disgust me. And the woman is silent this time as well. Can we please get whatever you're here for over with as soon as possible? Possibly irritated at my attitude, John has a stern look on his face. This is important. We haven't discussed division of property yet. I'm just here to receive my share. Money. Just as I thought. John looks excited. Yeah, you're right. Of course. I knew he would be here soon enough. So I was ready. I bring out my purse and hand him 30 cents. Here, this is your share. What? John and his new wife stare at the three dimes placed on the palm of his hand. What is this? He thrusts the coins on the floor. His new wife suddenly speaks up too. Are you kidding me? You can't call this property. Quit fooling around. They are both red in the face. That's all the savings that we have left. John must have thought there was more. But I calmly tell him. Unfortunately, this is reality. But he snores and looks down at me saying. What are you talking about? There's more. I know there is. You had $200,000. Hurry up and give me my share of a hundred thousand. He waves his hands around in an annoying gesture. And his wife is there next to him, nodding. I am shocked and stare at him, not making a move. You're the one who said you want this over as soon as possible. Hand me the money then. He starts screaming and throwing things in the house around. And he's a completely different person to the man I knew. Seeing these must be his true colors. I am so happy that I got to leave him. Hearing the large sounds and shouting, my dad, who had left the room, and my brother, who just got home, enter the living room. Dad is frozen at the sight of John going crazy. But he grabs his arms and put them around his back, stopping him from messing the room up any further. I briefly explained the situation to my brother, who is a lawyer. And because he knows about the divorce, 
he understands what is going on quickly enough. Joan's new wife hears our conversation and figures out that Joan is a lawyer. Hey, I never heard your ex-wife had a lawyer in the family. Her eyes are wide and she is screaming at John. I wonder why these two are so persistent about money. So, although I don't want to speak with John at all, I decide to ask John. Why do you need the money so badly? You divorced me. Because you said this woman is the woman of your dreams. You chose to be with her rather than me, and that's why you wanted me to leave. Yes, that's right. But division of property is important. That house we have now is, in the end. The house that you and Ella lived in together. So we want to build a new house of our own. We want children, so we need a car, and I want to take them on a nice vacation too. You know. I want to do the duties that any normal husband would do, which is why I'm here. Though it's tough for me. Every reason he mentions, it's so selfish. Okay, so he didn't want to come here. I don't want him here either. He doesn't know how terrible what he did was, so he doesn't seem sorry at all. And I financially supported our marriage. Handing over my share is the least you can do to thank your dear ex-husband, don't you think? He snorts again. What did he just say? That he supported me financially? Maybe I heard wrong. John had no will of working, and he would return home from work as soon as possible because he wanted to play online games. Whenever he didn't feel like it, he would take a day off. So he'd use up all his paydays off soon enough that he'd have to pretend he was ill. He had no will of earning more money, and he took full advantage of the fact that I was a nurse and was paid well. As for living expenses, he handed me hundred dollars several times when he felt like it. But to be honest, it was like he was an unemployed boyfriend who just lived in their girlfriend's apartment without doing anything. John never did any of the housework, and maybe I could understand if he had thanked me for my hard work. But I am so disappointed by his unreasonable words of "I financially supported our marriage." I was the one paying all the living expenses. How can you say that? According to what you just said, then. You should actually give me back the thirty cents that I just gave you too. You know. What are you talking about? You really don't know anything, do you, Missus? You too. I'm sure you were excited when you heard about my savings, but I have bad news for you. I am still calm, and Jung and his wife glare at me. From here. My brother speaks on my behalf. Excuse me, I'm Henry Thompson, and I'm a lawyer. Please allow me to explain on behalf of my sister. Only the savings made by the couple while they were married are subject to division of property. This means that any money saved up before the marriage is not. My sister saved up the two hundred thousand dollars before marriage, which means that it is her own property and cannot be divided between the two of you. You only had sixty cents left in your share account. Therefore, your share is half of that, which is thirty cents. There is no point complaining about this amount. It seems my sister was saving up for your future, but I believe you spent it all on your lady sitting next to you. Henry says all this very calmly, 
and John and his wife are shocked. But he tries to shrug back though. What I just said, I said as Catherine's brother. But please allow me to speak now, as her attorney. My client has requested you pay her a compensation. Why have you not made this payment? Exactly. I had requested the compensation, but John had only paid me partially, and I wondered why the rest of my payment had not been made yet. That is why I officially asked my brother to step in between us. My actual lawyer is his colleague, but we had not expected John to come here today. So, Henry is acting on my lawyer's behalf. With Henry's razor sharp gaze and words, John and his wife turned silent. You ask for your share, since you were the one who had an affair. You were the cause of the divorce. I do not believe it makes sense for you to ask for any amount. It seems you were spending all the money that my sister had been saving up for the two of you too, and my sister's request. Is that you return the total amount that you owe her, as well as paying the compensation? That's impossible, honey. Let's stop this. We can't push this any further. Zhang is standing up and kicking the table, and his wife tries to hold him down. When Henry will not budge and mentions the word court. It seems John has given up, and he starts speaking the truth. After the divorce, it seems he was fired, and since his wife is unemployed too, they started borrowing money. As a result, they now have so much debt that they can't pay the compensation. When they were trying to come up with a way to earn money, they remembered my savings. They thought. I would give them half the amount if they mentioned division property. I am shocked and speechless when they change their attitude 180 degrees and beg me to help them. Next to me, my brother is shaking his head, indicating that I shouldn't listen to them. I don't feel any empathy for them at all. And tell them they still need to pay me back the compensation and my savings. I then ask my brother and father to see them out. These past few hours were like a storm. My mom comes back into the room with a sigh of relief, and starts cleaning up. My dad is furious, saying, "What a terrible man!" and helps her. My brother wraps my bag. You did nothing wrong. What you did today, and the divorce itself too. You should be confident, he says, comforting me. He adds that we need to make sure they pay the compensation, and he calls his colleague right away. All of us at the law firm are on your side, he says. I'm exhausted, mom. You did a great job. Why don't we all go out to have steak tonight? To make ourselves feel better, I collapse onto my mom, hugging her. My dad and brother agreed to going out, so we have a wonderful time for dinner that night. Later, with the help of my brother, his colleague, and the law firm, the compensation and used savings are being returned. John and his wife seem to have no luck with job interviews. And I hear they have ended up working several part-time jobs each. It's not like they will be buying a house or a car, or go on vacation for a while. It seems they are finally grateful to me after experiencing the life they have now. So when we see each other on the street, they politely say hello to me. I feel so much better, seeing that they have at least made this slight progress. As for me, 
I am currently in a steady relationship with the attorney that worked for me on this case. Henry is happy, saying that this man is perfect for me. One year after the divorce, I am thinking to introduce my new boyfriend to my parents soon. I am sure they will be very happy for me. The reason why I feel this way is because when my ex-husband mentioned the love of his life, I didn't really understand what he was saying. But now, I feel that maybe this man truly is the love of my life.